Hey everybody, it's Lon Sivan, and here it is. It's the glass. We got it, and we're going to take a look at it right now in great detail. I have it on right now with the sunglass attachment. This is one of the uh, freebies that they uh, threw in with it. So let's take a quick look at it and see exactly what it consists of. So here it is. This is this is it. It's uh, very well constructed, and it better be for fifteen hundred dollars. I'm actually on the fence as to whether or not I want to keep these things. I have. Uh, 30 days to try them out and decide if I want to uh, keep them. Otherwise, I can return them for a full refund. Uh, and we'll go through some of the software. That's why this thing is plugged in over here, because uh, I'm able to grab the screen in real time through my uh, computer. So it's kind of a neat way to demonstrate the product. Now, Google is not selling Google Glass through retail channels. In fact, they had this uh, kind of a contest uh, in order to pick uh, the 8,000 people that are now getting to own one. Uh, and basically, you went on a social media network and expressed interest in the product, and then they extended an invitation to you. Uh, they are not shipping these. You have to go to New York City or Los Angeles or a few other cities uh, to pick them up in person, where a Google employee will guide you through the process of calibrating the glass and learning how to use it. Uh, right off the bat, you'll see that I had the uh, sunglass attachment on. I do this because I, I look kind of, you look weird wearing these things no matter what you do, but you look less weird when you're out in the sun with sunglasses on as opposed to just holding, wearing them without the lens. Let me show you uh, what that looks like. So uh, you just pull them off like that and it comes off very easily, it goes on very easily. Uh, you do get a lot of fingerprints and stuff on the lenses because you have to really handle them directly to get them on and off. It also comes with clear lenses for some reason too, which uh, I guess some people might find that useful. But as you can see, when you have them just on, it is very apparent that you're wearing a, a computer on your head. And on this side, you can see if you're taking the side profile, it doesn't look all that strange, but when you look on this side, uh, there's a lot of plastic and a lot of uh, mechanisms and a camera here staring right at uh, the person that you're looking at. So let's take a look at some of the buttons. There aren't many to push, but there are a few. First of all, you're going to notice this thing in the corner here, and this thing, it says, uh, it's upside down, but uh, it says glass. And what this is, is a uh, bone induction speaker. So when it's on your head, uh, that that thing I was just showing you, the thing that's glass on it, is touching the side of your head behind your ear, and it will actually vibrate the bones in your head, and you'll be able to uh, hear what the speaker is uh, projecting out. You can hear it without it being attached to the bones in your head, but uh, you do hear it better when it's, uh, when it's connected to you. I, I found that in noisy environments, I had a hard time hearing people, and the, the speaker definitely peaks out quite a bit while you're uh, listening. So it's not perfect, um, but it, it's certainly not as good as having a headset in there, but it also eliminates having to put something in your ear and makes it easier to, to throw them on and throw them off. So uh, that's helpful there. So now on the uh, inside here, you have a button, and this is the standby button and also the power button. And this button's really important because the right side of the Google Glass is a touch sensitive area, and I'll show you how this works in a minute. Uh, but it's hard not to touch this. And every time you touch it, it's doing something. Sometimes it might do things you don't want it to do. For example, you could accidentally hit this thing two or three times, and the next thing you know, uh, some photo you didn't intend to share with the world is suddenly popping up on your Google Plus account. So you got to be really careful with this thing. It, it, it makes it easy to share things. Just keep that in mind. So uh, what I like to do is before I take it off my head is I push the button <laughs> so uh, it's not going to be inadvertently picking up uh, what I'm doing. Uh, below that is the USB port. We have our connector plugged in right now again because we're going to be uh, doing some demonstrations of the product itself. Um, on the front here, there is a little sensor that uh, can detect when the glass is up to your face. And that might be one way to circumvent that uh, false touch thing where if you, if you hit it by accident. Uh, it's a, it requires some calibration. I haven't really played with it too much, but uh, it, will, it does have a detector there to figure out whether or not it's on your head. And of course, here we have the screen. The screen is really good. I'm, I'm actually surprised how good the screen is uh, in all light. Even in, in bright skies, you can look up, kind of look at the sky, and you can actually see uh, what's on the screen. And that's really impressive. I did find that there is a little bit of bleed when you're in a darkened environment. It almost is too bright. And I, I haven't found a way to adjust the brightness manually. So it kind of determines what the lighting is and will uh, light the screen uh, appropriately. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you what the screen looks like. I'll be able to show you what's on the screen, but not what the experience is, just because it's so small and I lack the, the lens to make it work. But um, one of the things, though, when I'm using it, and by the way, you can adjust it here. You can see you can move this uh, back and forth to be able to get uh, the full frame in your field of vision. Um, one thing that I've noticed, though, and I'm going to use it right now just so you can see. So I'm uh, looking at an email that somebody sent me, and 
uh, looking at a picture I took. And you can see what's happening is I'm looking up. I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking up when I use it. And you, know, you would think, oh, this would be a great thing to use in the car, uh, but it isn't because you're taking your eyes off the road. Even though there's a, a heads-up display, uh, the, the, the display is up. So you're looking up in order to uh, see what's on the screen and away from what you're looking at. It also makes it difficult to carry on, a con maybe you shouldn't do this, but carry on a conversation uh, and also look at your screen at the same time. Uh, what is kind of neat, though, is when you're recording a video, it will uh, put, it in, put it up in real time so you can see uh, what your camera is seeing. And generally, as you can see here, uh, the field of view on it is really good. It's got a pretty wide angle lens on it, uh, and the, the video quality is excellent both in the day and the night. I took a shot here of my car driving in the evening, and it looks uh, pretty decent there. So uh, no complaint on that front. Now let me show you just briefly on the camera uh, side of the equation. You can uh, talk to the glass and have it take pictures, but it also has a camera button up here. And if you push it once, it'll take a picture. If you hold it down, it will start taking a video. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty quick way to get a photo out. And you know, that's, that's one thing that's kind of neat about it is that you know, if you're wearing these things, you've got a camera that's always at the ready. And you know, it, it's, uh, and I'm gonna talk about this later, but I think it's kind of like a segue. You know, it's ma it makes sense for maybe a police officer on patrol or somebody who needs some way to have information and a quick access to a camera. Journalists too could really benefit from it, but I don't know about the rest of society. Now, when you're home, glass will connect over the internet via your Wi-Fi, just like your computer or your tablet or anything else that you have uh, hooked up to your home network. But when you leave the house, there is no cellular modem inside of the glass. So it has no way of connecting to the internet without a smartphone. So you'll need to have a tethering service turned on with your AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile account or Sprint. Uh, and that's, depending on the service, a couple more bucks a month. Uh, and it connects via Bluetooth. So the glass will connect to the phone via Bluetooth and the phone will then uh, go out to the internet and grab the data. It does impact battery life. I found it certainly impacts battery life on my iPhone and I would imagine Android phones will have the same problem. Uh, one other thing to note is that if you have an iPhone, uh, you will not be able to do turn-by-turn -turn navigation using glass. Uh, that's something that requires an Android application at the moment. Hopefully there will be an iPhone version soon to allow you to do that. So. Let's take a look at the software, which we're going to do in another video, but we'll give you a sneak peek here. Uh, you say, OK, glass, and things happen. So uh, the next video, we'll go into detail about all the neat software that's embedded on the device. Thanks for watching. This is Lon Sybin.